We are in the book of Psalms and I am going to let them do the talking. I am so excited. We're going to be starting the Psalm 112 and I really love this one. They're all so good. Grab your Bible if you want to read along. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation of the Bible. Whatever version you have is fine by me. Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. Their children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. They themselves will be wealthy and their good deeds will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and righteous. Good comes to those who lend money generously and conduct their business fairly. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. They do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. They are confident and fearless and can face their foes triumphantly. They share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. The wicked will see this and be infuriated. They will grind their teeth in anger. They will slink away their hopes thwarted. So you see here the advantages of having faith in God. They have wonderful character and look at how God loves them, protects them, blesses them and guides them. It's good to have good godly character, but for the right reasons. Psalm 113, the scope of God's care. God's great mercy is demonstrated by his concern for the poor and the oppressed. Praise the Lord, Psalm 113. Yes, give praise, O servants to the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever, everywhere from east to west. Praise the name of the Lord, for the Lord is high above the nations. His glory is higher than the heavens. Who can be compared with the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high? He stoops to look down on heaven and on earth. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He sets them among princes, even the princes of his own people. He gives the childless woman a family, making her a happy mother. Praise the Lord. This is happening to so many of my friends right now, and it's absolutely wonderful. I love it. I love it. God is so good. Psalm 114. When the Israelites escaped from Egypt, when the family of Jacob left that foreign land, the land of Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel became his kingdom. The Red Sea saw them coming and hurried out of their way. The water of the Jordan River turned away. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. What's wrong, Red Sea, that made you hurry out of their way? What happened, Jordan River, that you turned away? Why, mountains, did you skip like rams? Why, hills like lambs, tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob? He turned the rock into a pool of water. Yes, a spring of water flowed from a solid rock. Wow. Psalm 115. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name goes all the glory. Yes, amen. For your unfailing love and faithfulness, why let the nation say, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens, and he does as he wishes. Our God, capital G, God. Their idols are merely things of silver and gold shaped by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak and eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear and noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel and feet but cannot walk and throats but cannot make a sound. And those who make idols are just like them, as are all who trust in them. O oh, Israel, trust in the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. O priest, descendants of Aaron, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. All who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. Yes, he is. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless the people of Israel and bless the descendants, the priests, the descendants of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both great and lowly. May the Lord richly bless both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heavens belong to the Lord, but he has given the earth to all humanity. The dead cannot sing praises to the Lord, for they have gone into the silence of the grave. But we can praise the Lord both now and forever. Praise the Lord. 
Oh, please don't be mad, but I want to read one more. Please don't be mad. You can read the rest of it with me later if you want to pause it, but Psalm 116. This is going to be the last one for now. Psalm 116. Praise for being saved from certain death. Worship is a thankful response and not a repayment for what God has done. I love the Lord because he hears my voice. In my prayer for mercy, because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. Death wrapped its ropes around me. The terrors of the great overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. How kind the Lord is, how good he is. So merciful, this God of ours. The Lord protects those of childlike faith. I was facing death and he saved me. Let my soul be at rest again. For the Lord has been good to me. He has saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. And so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. I believed in you, so I said, I am deeply troubled, Lord. In my anxiety, I cried out to you. These people are all liars. What can I offer the Lord for all he has done for me? What a good question. I will lift up the cup of salvation and praise the Lord's name for saving me. I will keep my promise to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. The Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. Oh Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I am your servant. Born into your household. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the house of the Lord, in the heart of Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Amen. Psalm 117 is really short. We're going to save it for next time. And sometimes when I'm reading the Bible, I don't know about you guys, you can share. But I do get very distracted. And most of the time, in my personal beliefs, I think whether it's a worry or a praise, if, we're, if we have anxieties about something, if we're distracted, bring those thoughts to God. The fact that you're reading the Bible and other thoughts come on your heart. Present those thoughts as prayers. God, I'm so worried. I'm so anxious. I'm so stressed about how I'm going to sleep tonight. I'm so worried about my job. I'm worried about my family, about my friends. When you're reading the Bible and your heart tugs in different directions, you can choose to stop, take a break, get on your knees and call out to God, pray to Him. Present your praises to Him and your prayers. Sometimes I think that when you're getting distracted in your quiet time with God, it is perfectly okay to pause, leave a highlighter, leave a ribbon, whatever you need to do. Take that time, these thoughts that are burdening your heart, cast your cares on the Lord for He cares for you. So just because my thoughts do pull in one direction or the other, as soon as I'm done reading here, I'm going to get on my knees and talk to God about the things that are on my heart that are distracting my mind. I don't think that we should overly burden ourselves because we have these goals about how much we want to read the Bible. What's more important is how you're reading the Bible with the quality of your heart, with your mind set on pleasing God, not doing it to check a box because you feel like you have to read the Bible and you have to pray every day. That's not the way it works. We should do it because we want to. We hunger for the Word of God. We hunger to communicate with Him. It is an absolute blessing to be able to pray, to be able to read the Holy Word, to have the offer of salvation, forgiveness, the love and grace and mercy of God. It's not about checking a box for reading so many chapters a, a day. That's one of the things that I have against when they have these read the Bible in a year goals because then it becomes so tedious. And if you enjoy that deeply in your heart, then fantastic, great, do what works for you in your relationship with God, your walk with God. But it's not about checking boxes. It's not about speed reading. Time with God is so precious and so fulfilling. It's not about checking a box. It's quality time with God, praising Him, worshiping Him, presenting your needs, your friends' needs, your families. Pray for people to find salvation, to grow to love the Bible. Whatever's on your heart, God wants to know. And if you want to share, feel free to do so. And maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you think if your mind gets distracted, just push through it, buckle down. Um, and it's going to be different for different people. So what works for you? I'd be interested in hearing if you want to share. Thank you so much again for your time. And I hope you are having a truly, truly blessed and beautiful day. Bye-bye.